Well, good evening. I'm honored to be able to share some reflections on my uh, seminary experience, what a ride that it's been. As I think back on these last three years, several things come to mind, uh, which I'm sure many of you can relate with. The early mornings and the late nights, the times when you feel like there's not enough time in the day, the uh, moments when you don't think you can fit another thing in your brain to have yet another flashcard to memorize. And do I mention the ever-present, persistent paper or paper's deadline that is consistently looming in the background, seemingly chasing you through the entire semester? Though these things were very much a part of my seminary experience, they don't characterize the major takeaways. What all these things have in mind or have in common is that they were all serving a purpose. They were a means to an end. And that end, you may be thinking, is now when we get to walk the stage and receive our diploma, and then we get to close this chapter of our lives and move on to bigger and better and bigger and better things. But brothers and sisters, we have made it to the end with our eyes on the work ahead, the eye, our eyes on the work that the Lord has been preparing us for. The end, as we know it here, marks the beginning of the calling to which we have been called. And I can't promise you that the struggles faced in this preparation will cease in ministry. In fact, it's safe to say that the struggles faced here are only but the beginning of what is ahead. But what I can promise, though, is that in the midst of the grind, our God is faithful. We have a faithful God who has been working in us, preparing us for the work of ministry. It is our faithful God who has sustained us here And it is our good and faithful God who will sustain us as we depart. The end we have in our sights is not just walking across the stage receiving a diploma of completion, but the end we are looking forward to is the sweet new beginning of the work that we have been prepared for. So with that in mind, there are several other things that flood my memory as I think back on these last three years. Things that remind me of the work that we have accomplished, things that leave the sweet taste in my mouth, a friendship with fellow students, faculty, church members, and friends of the seminary, a deep love and appreciation for God's word, and an eager anticipation to begin preaching to and shepherding God's people, a strong grasp on Christian doctrine with a conviction that doctrine and Christian living should not and cannot, in fact, be separated. With these reflections, many thanks are in order. To my family, the consistent support and prayers to my parents for um, continuing in prayer for me, um, encouraging me all along the way. To the staff, the faculty, the board of trustees, and to the generous donors, some of those who have become good friends. And to those who make what happens here possible. But I'd like to take a moment to highlight the one person whom without I don't know what, how I would have survived the last three years, my wife Sharon. You've been a stronghold through the ups and downs of this time. It was Sharon that was with me in those late nights, quizzing me with flashcards. It was Sharon who sat across from me with a smile as I rehearsed my first sermon, or let alone this speech, for the twelfth time. You continue to encourage me and to point me to Christ our Savior and Lord. Oftentimes in the middle of the semester, um, because this time would come without fail, I would look at Sharon and say, I I don't know how I'm going to get it all done. There's too much this semester. Sharon would calmly respond, knowing that we had been here before, with this common figure of speech. She would ask, Austin, how is it that you eat an elephant? You remember this. How do you, how do you eat an elephant? To which I would respond one bite at a time, of course. But this dialogue, though it was helpful, it was a bit irrelevant because you might be surprised to learn that I have not eaten an entire elephant. <laughs> However, you also be happy to know that this phrase became much more fitting when we were first introduced to the restaurant Salulitas. <laughs> Which for those familiar, and if you're not, you're missing out, Salulita serves a burrito that's the size of a small baby. (laughs) So as I began to get overwhelmed, Sharon would then ask the question, Austin, how do you eat a Salulita's burrito? (laughs) Well, then I would respond 
more fittingly, one bite at a time, knowing, knowing all too well that I will be in pain for at least the next 24 hours. <laughs> We're leaving with many friends, friends who we will maintain for a lifetime, friends who will be with us, pointing us to Christ in the struggle of gospel ministry, friends who will remind us of our own weaknesses and our inadequacies to then point us to our only hope and our only strength, Christ Jesus our Lord. My memories are filled, yes, with the grind of study, but what else would you expect from a first-rate academic institution? More prominent are the memories of good friends with whom to share good conversations and fellowship. A sense of community life where our spouses found inclusion and our children found great playmates. And most importantly, much growth in our understanding of the scriptures, our love for Christ, and our growing desire to care for and to shepherd those whom the Lord may be pleased to place into our care. My, appreci my appreciation for the staff and faculty is one of abundance. It is evident that the classroom is intentionally designed, as stated in the mission of Westminster Seminary California, to develop students with a balanced combination of scholarship and Christ-like piety. Thank you to our dedicated and laser-focused faculty for fulfilling your role in the body of Christ, for taking us, taking up the task to train future servants of Christ's church, and for unapologetically walking us through, though sometimes it felt like you were running us through, the rigor of this curriculum with a consistent reminder of who we are, why we're here, and what we are doing. I am a proud graduate of Westminster Seminary, California, and I do look forward, brothers and sisters, to laboring with you in gospel ministry as we together seek to glorify Christ, to promote his gospel, and to serve his church. Thank you.